Okay, so let's go ahead and discuss the concept of simplifying radicals. Okay, so a radical is this symbol down here, okay? Kind of looks like a division box with a check mark in front of it. So, and, and you guys know what a square root. So, you know, if I write this, I can read this as the square root of 25, or I could read this as radical 25. And we call the number inside, the symbol is called the radical, and the number inside the radical is called the radicand. But we know that the answer to this, if we simplify radical 25 or the square root of 25, we know that we're asking what number got multiplied by itself to equal 25, and we know that the answer to that is 5. So that's very easy to find. It's very easy to find the square root of 25 because 25 is what's called a perfect square. Perfect square comes from whole numbers multiplied by themselves. And you guys learned these back in elementary school. You know, uh, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, 6 times 6, 7 times 7, 8 times 8, 9 times 9, 10 times 10, 11 times 11, 12 times 12, and so on and so forth. Those are perfect squares square numbers that come from whole numbers. So what happens when you're trying to find the square root of a number that's not a perfect square? So for example, we know that 49 is a perfect square. What if I tried to find the square root of 50? Well, 50 is not a perfect square. And whenever you try to find the square root of a number, a whole number that's not a perfect square, you get an irrational number. An irrational number is a decimal number that goes on forever and does not have any repeating patterns. So the reason that happens is because there is no number that multiplied by itself equals exactly 50. You can get really close, you know, 49.99999 something, but you can never get 50 exactly. So in algebra, what we do with a numbers radicals that are not perfect squares is we could simplify the radicals okay well when you answer here when i say square root of 25 equals 5 that's also simplifying the radical but we could simplify radicals that are not perfect squares and what we do is we look inside of 50 and we think of the factors of 50 we try to see if we could find any perfect squares within the factors of 50 and we can within the factors of 50 we have 25 times 2. And 25 is a perfect square, just like we've seen here in the beginning. So what that means is I can write radical, I could rewrite radical 50 as radical 25 times 2. And what that allows me to do is I can actually find the square root of at least part of this radical. Now, we can split up both of these factors into their own radicals. So in other words, this looks like this. Radical 25 times radical 2. And the reason why is because now I can answer this question. What is the square root of 25? And we know that that's 5. And notice that once I answer the question, what is the square root of 25? I no longer have the radical here because I took care of that. And here, radical 2, there is no perfect square root of 2. So we're just going to leave it inside the radical, and we're going to write it down here as 5 times radical 2. But in math, we know that when we put two terms next to each other with no signs in between, that means multiplication. So I don't really need this dot, so I just write it like this. Okay, so my simplified answer for radical 50 is 5 radical 2 or 5 times radical 2. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of how that works, and hopefully you'll understand. Okay, so our first example here, radical 200. Again, you should pause and try to get the answer by yourself, and then come back and see if you got what I got. So radical 200, I need to think, okay, are there any perfect squares that are a factor of 200? This one's pretty easy to find, right? So 200 comes from 100 times 2. And we know that 100 is a perfect square because 10 times 10 equals 100. So I could rewrite radical 200 as radical 100 times 2 and then break it, break them up into separate pieces, radical 100 times radical 2. 
And so I know, okay, the square root of 100 is 10. So this becomes 10 radical 2. And that's my simplified answer. All right, second example here. How about 125? Are there any perfect squares within as a factor of 125? Well, I see this 25 at the end here. So that gives me an idea. 125 must have 25 as a factor. And 25 is a perfect square. So 25 times what? 25 times 5. So I can rewrite radical 125 as radical 25 times 5. And then again as radical 25 times radical 5. And I can answer the question, what is the square root of 25? That's 5. So my simplified answer here is 5 radical 5. Yeah, hopefully you're getting this. Next example here. This might seem confusing or scary. We see this 3 radical 80 here. Okay. And what we are looking for here is, okay, well, um, this 3 out here, remember, don't let that scare you. All that means is that I'm taking whatever the square root of rate of 80 is, whatever the square root of 80 is, I'm going to multiply that by 3. That's why that looks like that. Okay. So we could still simplify this here, this square root of 80. Okay. So I need to think again uh, about factors of 80. Now you need to be careful, folks. If I think about the factors of 80, I say, oh, well, 80 divided by 4 is 20. And look at that. Well, 4 is a perfect square. Perfect. But this is not a good way to go because within 20, there's another perfect square. Because 20 can be broken down into 4 times 5. And 4 is a perfect square again. Okay? So kind of like when you simplify fractions, you're looking for the greatest common factor. Well, here, when you're trying to simplify a radical, you're looking for that greatest common perf uh, perfect square factor. So here, instead of going with 4 times 20, I could actually go with 4 times 4 is 16. So I can go with 16 times 5. Okay, so I'm going to erase this here, and I'm going to rewrite 3 radical 80 as 3 radical 16 times 5. Okay, and then I could break this up. So this kind of looks like 3 times radical 16 times radical 5. And then, of course, the square root here that we can answer is we know that the square root of 16 is 4. So now this becomes 3 times 4. Notice I no longer have the radical because I answered that question. The square root of 16 is 4 times radical 5. And then finally, I can just multiply together 3 times 4. So my answer is 12 radical 5. Okay, so how about this one here with the negative 5 and the 112? So negative 5 times radical 112. Let's see what we can get out of 112. Well, I know that 112 can be divided by 2. It's an even number, right? So 2 times what makes 112? Put a 5 here, carry that over. Well, 2 times 56. Okay, all right, well, 56 is another even number, so I can say, okay, well, 2 times what? 2 times 2 is a 4, carry the 1, 2 times 28. All right, well, 28 is another even number, and that gives me 2 times 14, and 14 is another even number, and that gives me 2 times 7. I don't know if you remember this or if you've done this. This is called prime factorization, yes? So now if I take these prime numbers, I multiply, I multiply them all together. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, okay? These four twos multiply together to give me my perfect square, which is 16. So 112 can be factored to 16 times 7, okay? And so that's what we can use here 
to factor this. So negative 5 times radical 112 can become negative 5 times 16 times the radical radical 16 times 7. We can break this up to now negative 5 times radical 16 times radical 7. Radical 16, we know, simplifies to 4, because the square root of 16 is 4. So this becomes negative 5 times 4 times radical 7. And negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Then we just bring the radical 7 right next to that. So our answer is negative 20 times radical 7. Okay? Our next example, we start to have some variables in here. And so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Let's think about the number 63. And hopefully you got there quickly. What are the factors of 63? 9 times 7. And 9 is a perfect square. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite radical 63t to the fourth as radical 9 times 7 times t to the fourth power. Okay? We could break all of these up. So we have radical 9 times radical 7 times radical t to the fourth power. Okay? Well, we know what the square, root, the square root of 9 is. The square root of 9 is 3. Okay? And so I'm going to just leave this radical 7 over here because I know I'm not going to touch this radical 7. The question is, what do I do with this radical t to the fourth? How do I get, find a square root of that? Well, if I think about taking a variable and squaring it, if you remember when we learned about raising a power to a power, so we say here t to the what power squared equals t to the fourth. Remember, since when you raise a power to a power, you multiply the exponents, basically you're thinking, okay, well, 2 times what number equals 4? And that's 2. So saying what's the square root of t to the fourth is reversing this process. So the square root of t to the fourth is 2. So this now becomes 3 times t squared times radical 7. And in this case, I just put it all together. So my answer is 3t squared radical 7. Okay. Let's take a look at another example like that one here, an example number six. So um, we have the number 48 n to the ninth power, 48 n to the ninth power. So let's think about the 48 first of all. Okay, 48. What are the, what is a perfect square factor for 48? Okay, if we go with the prime factorization again, we can say well, two times 24. And then from 24, we could say 2 times 12. And from 12, we could say 2 times 6. And from 6, we can say 2 times 3. So here we go. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is, once again, it's 16. Okay? So we know that 48 can factor to 16 times 3. So we got that part. So we have here radical 16 times 3. Now how about this n to the ninth? If we go back to, to this example with t to the second to the second power, since we are squaring a variable means that basically we have this exponent of 2 outside here, okay? That means when we take a variable and we square it, the exponent on our variable is always going to be an even number because you're multiplying by 2, correct? Now, here we have this n to the ninth. So, how, what, what can I do to n to the ninth so that the exponent becomes an even number so that I can find the square root of this? Well, if I just take 1n away, what's 9 minus 1? 8. So, I can take n to the ninth and factor it as n to the eighth times n. Okay, so let's go ahead and break this up into their pieces. So I'm going to say, okay, radical 16 times radical 3 times radical n to the 8th 
times radical n. Now we know what the square root of 16 is. The square root of 16 is 4. Now, I'm going to leave, yeah, hopefully you figure this out by now, I'm not really going to be touching radical 3 because there's no perfect square root for 3, and I'm not going to be touching radical n. The one I have to deal with is radical n to the eighth. So again, going back to this example I used here, so I'm going to say, okay, well, n to the what power raised to the second power, what would this exponent need to be so that I end up with an 8? Because remember, we're multiplying by 2. So 2 times what is 8? And the answer is 4. So the square root of n to the 8th is n to the 4th power. So I'm going to put that here. Okay? n to the 4th power. And then let's bring these down. Times radical 3 times radical n. And what we can do is we could put these together. So 4 times n to the 4th is 4 n to the fourth, and then I could put radical three and radical n together under the same radical. I don't need to have them separate. So four n to the fourth, radical three n. All right, a few more examples. This is kind of lengthy, but I'm, I want to make sure that I show you as many examples as possible. So if we look at this problem here, we're multiplying two radicals together. And that might look tricky for a minute, but if you think about it, back here in all these problems, we were taking a number and breaking it up into multiplication between two different radicals. So this is kind of just the same thing, but backwards, right? So all we, all we need to do is multiply these together. So what is radical 5 times 70? Well, 5 times 70 is 350. So we end up with radical 350. And so now from here, we start the process again. So the question is, what can we take out of 350? What can we, what can we pull out of 350? Okay. So if we look here, all right, we have 350. Let's pull out 5, right? So we have 5 times... 70, which is where we were just at. And from 70, let's pull out 5 again. We have 5 times what? 1. We have 5 times 14. And from 14, we have 2 times 7. These are all prime numbers. These are our prime factorization. So we know that 5 times 5 gives us 25. That's a perfect square. If I, if I add a 2 in there, that, that gives me 50. That's not a perfect square. If I multiply the 7 in there, that gives me 140, 175. That's not a perfect square. So here's my perfect squares. 25 times what? 25 times 14. Okay? So, let me erase this because I need to make some room. So now radical 350 can be broken into radical a 25 times 14, which I can rewrite as radical 25 times radical 14, and the square root of 25 is 5, so this becomes, as our simplified answer, 5 times radical 14. Okay, next we have a similar example, and this time with variables in there. So let's go ahead and hit the road running. We know we just got to multiply this together, right? So I'm going to multiply within one radical 4a times 12a to the fifth. So what's 4 times 12? 48. And what's a times a to the fifth? a to the sixth power. So this becomes radical 48a to the sixth power. Okay, I think we did 48 back here somewhere. There we go. So we know that 48 is 16 times 3. So we now can rewrite 48 as 16 times 3. So this becomes radical 16 times 3 times a to the 6th power. And again, this becomes radical 16 
times, well, I'm going to leave radical 3 on the end because we know that that's the one that's not going to change. So times radical a to the 6 times radical 3. So the square root of 16 is 4. And how about a to the 6 again? a to the what raised to the second power? So what would my exponent here have to be so that when I multiply it by 2, I get 6? The answer is 3, right? So this becomes 4 a to the third, because the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of a to the 6 is a to the third, times radical 3. Hopefully this is working out for you so far so good. Now we have some examples here with fractions. Do not let this scare you because this is not as difficult as it seems. You know this already, even if you think you don't. The first thing we can do when we have a fraction uh, inside of a big radical like this, you can rewrite this as, okay, radical 100 over radical 225. And this is actually easier than it seems because you know the square root of 100. The square root of 100 is 10. And the square root of 225 is 15. So what now? What do you suppose we do now? I can simplify this, right? 10 and 15 can be divided by 5. So my final answer is 2 thirds. Okay? So now, same thing over here with number 10. But remember, we learned a little something about dividing with exponents. What did we learn? Well, when you're dividing uh, powers that have the same base, you can subtract exponents. So here we have an x to the fifth power and we have an x to the what? To the first power. So I can subtract. What's x to the fifth divided by x to the first? That becomes x to the fourth power. So I can rewrite this radical as, let's leave it in the big radical for first. It's going to be, be now 49 x to the fourth over just 25, okay? Because when we did this x to the fifth divided by x to the first, and we ended up with x to the fourth, now there's no x down here because we divided it in, okay? And I can rewrite this now as radical 49 x to the fourth over radical 25, okay? So if you think about this, think about this in pieces, you already kind of know what this is. So this is going to be now radical. I'm going to bring it down here, okay? Radical 49 times radical x to the fourth over radical 25. Now, what's the square root of 49? 7. The square root of x to the fourth? Remember, uh, we got that up here. x to the what? raise to the second power. What, what do I have, this have to be so that when I multiply these two exponents together, I get 4? It's going to be x squared. So 7x squared over, and the square root of 25 is 5. So there's my answer there. Take a little water break here. All right. Last two examples here. So take a look at this radical 5 over radical 2. So we might think here that there's really nothing to do because um, radical 5 is not a perfect square and I can't simplify it. I can't pull any perfect squares out of 5 because it's a prime number. And same goes for radical 2. So what can I do? Well, I can use a little bit of multiplication to change this up so that I can simplify it a little bit. And the way that works is, remember, I can take any fraction, and you know, 3 over 4, and I can change it to have different numbers but mean the same thing. So if I take 3 over 4 and I multiply both parts of this fraction by 2, I end up with 6 eighths. Now, 6, L, 6 eighths tells the same story as 3 fourths but with different numbers. So I could do the same thing here. And what I want to do when you see this is I want to go ahead and multiply both parts of this fraction by the radical on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply both parts of this fraction by radical 2. Now check out what happens down here so you can see why this works. What's radical 2 times radical 2? Well, this would be what? Radical 2 times 2. And 
2 times 2 is 4. And what's the square root of 4? The square root of 4 is 2. So basically, when you multiply a radical by itself, you break the radicand free of the radical. So basically, we end up eliminating the radical symbol. So radical 2 times radical 2 is 2. Okay? So when I do this, I now end up with, on the bottom of my fraction, I now have a 2 outside of the radical. Because again, radical 2 times radical 2 is 2. And on top, what's radical 5 times radical 2? Radical 10. And can I do anything with this? No, nope, because once again, 10 is not a perfect square, and there are no perfect squares that I can factor out of 10. So this is my answer. Please note that in this case, the radical is only, notice how it's a small radical, the radical is only over the 10 and not the denominator of 2. All right, so our final example, we have the same deal here. We have radical 12 and radical 15. I cannot pull, actually, I can pull a perfect square out of 12, but I can't pull a perfect square out of 15. So what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and multiply both parts of this fraction by radical 15. Okay, and again, what that does is it's going to break 15 free of this radical. So now on the bottom of my fraction, I have... 15, because radical 15 times radical 15 is 15. Think about it. The square root of 15 times the square root of 15 is 15. And then I have 12 times 15 is what? 12 times 15 is... I should have worked this out before, but oh well. 12 times 15 equals 180. So on over here, I have radical... 180. Okay? And so now I need to try to factor a perfect square out of 180. And I worked this out before. And 180 factors to 36 times 5. So now I have radical 36 times 5 over 15. So I'm going to do this here. So now radical 36 times radical 5 over 15, and the square root of 36 is 6, so now this becomes 6 radical 5 over 15, and just like any good fraction, 6 and 15 can both be divided by 3, so I can simplify here, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 15 divided by 3 is 5, so my answer is 2 radical 5 over 5. Okay, I hope that this lengthy video helps you understand everything you need to understand about simplifying radicals.